It's your girl Nia here back with another video. Today is Disturbed Thursday. Today video is gonna be spooky. Ooh. So check out my TikTok at P underscore N K D U C H E S S to check out how I achieved this makeup look today. Yes. Um, and all my other makeup looks is also on my TikTok. All my social medias will be listed down below. Um, every, like subscribe to my channel so you can see all my new content and make sure to like my video thank you in 1991 brian kendall and his family lived in baltimore maryland brian and his wife melinda was originally from uh west virginia they were like country folks so they missed that lifestyle like they were tired of the city life uh, Brian worked as a, a carpenter, but they were deciding to move back home to West Virginia. And that means Brian would either have to find a new job or he would have to drive five hours going to work and back home. So that's like 10 hours of his day back and forth every day. Brian and his wife were searching for new homes when they came across this beautiful home in Slainsville, West Virginia. Girl, their population is of 163 people. That town is too small for me. Brian and Melinda house were built like a cabin. The house was deep in the forest. They didn't have any neighbors. And it was a single floor house. I didn't know houses were one level. I thought all houses would be like two levels, you know, or more. But yeah, I didn't know. The house is isolated just in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia. Brian and Melinda, they came not from a good place. Like, they came from an urban area, should, should I say, I guess. So, they wanted their children to be protective. Like, when their children go outside, they don't want to really have to worry about them. You know what I mean? It was lonely out there, but they felt safe. Brian brought the family a black Labrador dog to protect him and his family. Her name was Coco. The family loved their new town and they loved their new dog. They felt good about moving to Slainsville. After moving into their new home, Melinda invited over her brother and his family because she wanted to show them the new crib and to celebrate her new birthday because they missed it. So after kicking ice cream, the kids went into the living room to play. Meanwhile, the adults are in the in the kitchen chilling and just catching up. The adults realized something strange while the children were playing. There were balloons everywhere on the ceiling because the children were playing with the balloons and taking the balloons into the living room when everybody went in the house. So when they let them go, they floated straight up to the ceiling. And did I say they had high ceilings? Well, they definitely did. As the children are playing, the adults see that one of the balloons is slowly just coming down as if somebody is just pulling on it. Like, just coming down. So, like, what the fuck? Like, that would have creeped me out. They are traumatized. The kids don't even know what's going on. So, they are just flabbergasted and looking at the balloon. Like, stopped in the middle of the room. Like, the balloon just stopped. Then it starts moving across the room to Jordan. Jordan is Melinda Lee's niece. It was her birthday celebration. And when she notices it, she says thank you. And when she goes in to grab the balloon, it's like she missed the timing. And the balloon just started floating back up to the ceiling as if somebody tried to hand it to her. Jordan just turns around and starts back playing with the kids. But the adults are like startled. They're like, what the? Did you see that? Yes, I seen it. Did you see it? Like, you know what I mean? Everybody goes into the living room and one of the parents grabbed the balloon and they are demonstrating how like something like this will happen. They are stuck and confused, girl. They walked over to George Jordan and asked her, like, who was you talking to? And dead ass, she pointed into the empty space and said, him. And everybody just laughs it off. Like, they, they, like, you know, they felt like they were just scaring themselves. And they just forgot about it. I don't know whether they was under the influence or not. But they just let it go. When Jordan and her parents left, Melinda and Brian are thinking to themselves, like, that was a weird. Like, that was weird as fuck. That was a weird situation. A couple of days later, Brian asked her daughter, Blair, did she want to go exploring in the forest in their backyard? She, she says yes, and they head out to the forest. And on their way, they see a van. Like, this van is just literally in the middle of the forest. There's no road next to it or nothing. 
they looked at the van and the van was burnt up like in a very bad fire like it's just basically the frame of the van left and it's just parked in the middle of the forest like did i say it's no roads like this is their backyard so and then they see burnt up stuff teddy bears and dogs on this burnt up mattress like they know it's a mattress because it was nothing but springs and whatever's left from a mattress sitting there and Blair and Brian just turned around and went back home like expiration is over. Brian has been trying to commute back and forth from Baltimore to West Virginia every day, but it was literally killing him. Like I said, it was 10 hours. So as months are going by, Brian takes the car every week from Monday to Friday, like because he would just go stay with his mom. His mom still lived in Baltimore. And he will come back home on the weekends. That's a no-go for me. Sorry. So that leaves Melinda and the kids in the middle of the forest with no vehicle Monday all the way to Friday. Did they go to school? I don't know. Like, no, sir, no, ma'am. We have to buy another vehicle immediately. Like, But Melinda, she was used to this lifestyle. So it didn't really bother her. Like, it was some of us. Blair wanted to go camp and Blair's their daughter. Blair wanted to go camping in their RV camper they had parked in the front of the house. She wanted to sleep out there for a night, you know, camping by herself. So when Brian was at work, Melinda finally gave in and let her camp in the camper. She had been asking for weeks. Melinda didn't like the idea, but she felt like the kids were bored. They were cooped up in the house, so she like, go ahead and you could take the dog Coco. Blair packed up her little flashlight, a book, and a couple of, you know, just snacks and stuff to keep her busy. And Melinda walked her to the RV and uh, gave her a kiss, goodnight, and told her to keep the doors locked. When Blair finally falls asleep, she wakes back up in the middle of the night. Like, Coco is really acting weird. I think Coco woke her up. As Blair is trying to calm Coco down, Coco goes by the door and Blair sees a black figure walk past the RV. Like, I will be shitting bricks. Shitting bricks. She isn't really sure whether or not it was a person or an animal, but she definitely saw something walk past the RV. Coco is now growling at the window next to Blair, but she just thinks it's her mom. So she just picks up the, her flashlight. She go peeks her head out the um, RV door. She unlocks it, peeks her head out. She opens the RV door and yells, Mom, but when she looks up at the house, all the lights are out. So she closes the fucking door back and locks it. Good girl. She goes back to her bed and Coco is just still growling. She is now showing her teeth. Blair peeks up from under the covers like this. Looks out her window by the bed and she sees that man looking straight back at her in the RV. She jumps right back under her covers. Like just terrified. And Coco jumps right on top of her and protects her. At some point... Uh, Blair goes back to sleep, but back at the house, Melinda puts Sean to bed. After she comes back to the house from walking Blair to the RV, Sean was a good sleeper. He doesn't wake up through the middle of the night, but he kept waking up this night a couple of times throughout the night. So Melinda finally asks Sean, like, what's the matter? And he said he saw a man through his window. Remember, this is a one-level house, so when Melinda looks through his window and sees nothing, she just tells Sean, oh, you just saw a deer, and he eventually goes back to sleep. Blair wakes up the next morning, and she is happy that it's morning. She goes and has breakfast with her mom and little brother, and Melinda, you know, asks her daughter, like, how was your night? Like, Blair was usually the talkative type of kid, but and Melinda is just asking her, like, you know, did you have fun? And Blair is just like, I don't ever want to go camping again. And Melinda is like, don't worry, you don't have to. As simple as that. The day go by as normal, no problems or nothing. Melinda put her children to bed and she eventually goes to sleep. But she has a weird dream. In her dream, she wakes up and it's a little boy and he's waved his hand like, you know, like, come follow me. So she gets up, she said, and she heads to the front porch. It's daylight in her dream. She's in her front yard, and there are just clotheslines with big white sheets. Just like, you know how you see in certain movies, it's just like clothesline with big white sheets full in the yard. And she is trying to look for the little boy, but she stops because she feels something on her feet. And when she looks down on her feet, 
It's a clothespin on her pig on her big toe. How did it get there? We don't know. Oh, it's a dream. Cause I'm like, oh my god, we don't know. So when we sh when she removes the clothespin and she w when she and she wakes up afterwards, she realized she was dreaming and she just go back to sleep. When she wakes up this mo the next morning. And is on her way to make her, you know, her and the kids some breakfast. She notices a clothespin on the floor. She called her sisters and tell her like, yo, what's been going on? Da, 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 da. I had this dream. My kid this, blah, blah. And the sis like, yo, you need a break. Y'all been in that house. Y'all been all alone. Y'all don't go nowhere. Like that type of stuff. You need some rest. So she like, I'm coming to pick up the kids. When her sister come pick up the kids, Melinda is like, um... Let me just take this time and explore, you know, my backyard and stuff. So she go for the a walk in the woods, and she sees a little cemetery. That's, like, in the woods, like, literally, is like a little cemetery by her house. And the size of the headstones are for children, and this freaked her out. And she turned around and headed back home. A few days later, Belair is sleeping. Their daughter, remember, Melinda is the mother. She wakes up in the middle of the night for no reason, and she sees that the curtain that's always closed in her room is just wide open. When she gets up to close the window, she sees a figure out by the tree looking back at her. She, and it starts hauling ass straight towards her. She immediately closed the curtain and jumps under the covers. Coco is in Melinda's room going ballistic. She charges to Blair's room straight, like, go straight towards the window. And she's barking, growling, just going crazy. This wakes Melinda up. And she immediately goes to check in on her kids. And when she checks on Sean, he's still sleeping. When she goes in Blair's room, Blair is under her freaking blanket, just trembling and terrified. Blair tells her exactly what she saw. And Melinda looks out the window and says, oh, it was just probably a deer or something, a beer, you know, something like that. She stays in Blair's room until she falls asleep. When Melinda goes back to her room and goes back to sleep, she feels a tapping on the back of her head. And she's just assuming it's Sean or Blair. She doesn't turn around or anything. And she just says, honey, just it's, everything is fine. Go back to bed. And it's just silent after that. And so she feels another tap on her head. And when she opens her eyes and turn around, nobody is there. Ooh, can you imagine? She flipped on her lights and she got up, but she was scared because Coco was on the bed growling in the same direction. She goes to check on the kids and they are still asleep. Can you imagine the fear she is feeling or going through? Ooh, matter of fact, in an interview, she said she didn't like really believe in hauntings and stuff until she got into this house. She checks the house to make sure everything is still locked up and she goes right back to bed and goes to sleep. When she got up, she calls her mom, and she was like, Mom, can we use the car? Like, I need to go run some errands. I need to just get out this house. Can you blame her? No, I don't blame you, girl. Like, they all get in the car, and they head out. They let Coco out in the backyard into his cage, into her cage. When they arrive at their local gas station after running errands to, uh, you know, fill up her mom's car, she fires up a conversation with a longtime resident, and they tell her about her property. They're like, yo, did you hear about your home? And she's like, no. And the woman is like, there was a horrendous fire that happened on that property. And she explains to the, res the resident that she found a little cemetery on her property. As she is driving away, she feels a slight relief because that explains what's been going on at the home. So she is kind of happy that it's a family haunting her home. It could be worse. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what she's saying. It could be worse. So when they got back home, they realized Coco was gone. She was in her outside cage, and there was no sign of her digging her way out, and the gate was still locked. And they would never see or know what happened to Coco. Like, that was it. A couple of days go by, Brian and Brian is home from work, everyone is sleeping and she's, and Melinda is up watching TV. At some point, she goes to the bed, uh, she goes to bed and start having the same dream as before. When she gets up, it is the same little boy standing at the foot of her bed, and she gets up and follow him to the front of the yard. With all the white sheets again, like it's still white sheets so as she is following him 
And this time she finds him and he looks about the same age as her son, Sean, like three and a half, four. He looks terrified and he is looking towards his left and this tall, dark figure starts walking towards her. She is terrified and this makes her wake up. And when she wakes up, she hears a scream and it's Sean. Her Brian gets up, runs to Sean's room, and he says the monster came in the window. Sean has a very badly broken arm. Like, what the fuck? They all get up and get him to the hospital where he stayed for three days. That is not good ghost, Melinda. That is not good ghost. Brian went back to work and Melinda had to borrow her mom's car to pick him up as they were on their way back home. When they car when their car broke down, a nice woman stops and gives them a ride back to their house. As they are driving, the lady is like recognizing where she's going. She's like, oh my God, did you hear the story about your house? And Melinda is like, yeah, there was a horrible fire. And the lady is like, no, 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 girl. No, no, no. The last tenant before you and your family was allegedly hurting kids. There's no proof, but some locals took it upon themselves and convinced the guy to go hunting with them. And they ambushed him and his body was never found. And this rumor is a van in the back of your house where they put him in and set the fire. Melinda is shocked hearing this. She realized that she just couldn't live there no more. Like, that is not a family. That's negative energy she's feeling. Like, there's demons there. So, like, she calls Brian and is like, Bae, I can't take this no more. I don't want to live here no more. It's too much going on. And Brian is like, honey, I'm on my way. Like, pack up. When he arrived, they packed their shit and they moved, and he moved, and they moved to his mom's house. And they never went back to that house again besides picking up the rest of their stuff. So, what do you think about this story, guys? Do you believe in the paranormal? I believe anything is possible. Thank you for watching today's video. All my social medias are listed down below in the description box. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all for Mystery Monday. Peace.